Well, thank you all for joining me tonight uh, as we continue our uh, study, uh, Treasuring God's Word Together. Uh, tonight, what we're going to talk about is theophanies. Um, that may be a big word, a big concept for you. Um, you might, might have never even seen it. But simply, theophanies is two words together, theo and phanes, which is uh, God and appearances. And so let me give you just a, a brief definition. Uh, theophanies are physical appearances or personal manifestations of a God to a person. Uh, that's just a general definition. Uh, of course, we're not here generalities. We're not talking about a God here. But we're talking about primarily uh, divine appearances. Okay? Appearances of God. Okay? So this is God showing up in the Old Testament. Um, I think this is important uh, because, as you'll see, it, it plays into the way Jesus um, would make an apologetic or a defense for his nature as the second person of the Trinity and the Son of God. And so um, I think, again, as last week, as we talk about divine appearances of God in the Old Testament, I think it's important for us to uh, ask one question, you know, what's our problem, right? What's uh, our problem? Okay, what's the big problem? Why did God, I mean, how does God show up in the Old Testament? And why is it that, um, you know, we can't see God? Okay, now last week we made a point of, of talking about the issue of sin. But I, I want to just read to you this passage, right? In Exodus uh, thirty three twenty, it says, You cannot see my face. For a man shall not see me and live. Okay, um, Nobody can see God and live. And so we have a problem, right? God needs to show himself, demonstrate his love for us in the Old Testament, which he did. But he needed to do it in a way in which he concealed um, himself um, through theophanies. Okay, And that's, that's what theophany is. It's God demonstrating who he is in the Old Testament um, through a variety of different ways, uh, in order really, by His grace and mercy, uh, connecting with us, having relationship with us, because of this truth, that we cannot see God's face, okay? So that, that's, that's crucial here as we think about that, okay? Think about a couple of things, right? God um, showed Himself at the burning bush, right? You're familiar with that. Moses, God said, you know, take off your sandals, you know, uh, come before me for this is holy ground. That's Exodus 3. He spoke through a burning bush. It's very weird, okay? But that's a, a natural theophany, right? He took on a natural creative uh, form to speak to man, okay? Man, remember, uh, uh, man could not see God and live, so he had to show himself in that way. Exodus thirteen twenty one. He demonstrated himself in a pillar of fire, right? Again, um, you know, there, there's, this is the way he communicated uh, with his people. They cannot see him, and so Theophanes was the way he would demonstrate his person here on the earth. Uh, but there's one way um, in which he, we see God really uh, coming um, and meeting God's people, uh, and, and it is through the angel of the Lord. Okay, it is through the angel of the Lord. And so you're going to see um, the angel of the Lord happen uh, regularly in the Old Testament. Uh, and um, what we're going to do tonight is we're going to look at just one, one passage uh, in the Old Testament. Uh, I suggest, you know, you read it, uh, you look at it, but it's, uh, it's going to be um, Genesis 16. Genesis 16, okay? And um, Genesis 16, you have the very crucial... Um, story of, um, you know, Adam, I mean, uh, Abraham and Sarah, you know, waiting to have a, the promised child got a promised, right? Abraham was around 86, right? Um, he was getting old. God had promised them that he would bear forth a seed, and that seed would be the promise that God had given him, that through him all the nations will be blessed. You could read more about this in Genesis uh, chapter 12. Um, but what happens, right? He wants to do it his own way, right? And, and, and Sarah does as well. They want the promise before trusting God. And so um, they go and, and Abraham lays with his servant, Hagar. Of course, that was not God's promise. That was not what God desired. 
But as we all do sometimes and many times, we disobey God and try to do things our own way in our flesh. But what happens? Right? It doesn't go too well. Soon enough, Sarah is upset. She's filled with contempt, jealousy, uh, begins to treat her like she's worthless, and she flees. Okay, Hagar flees with Abraham's first son. Okay, and so here is what we see as she's fleeing away. Uh, stay here with me, and it says this. This is her probably in the desert, out there somewhere in the wilderness, and we read, and the angel, okay, and the angel of the Lord found her, okay, so just keep that in mind, found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, okay, uh, the spring on the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, servant of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from my mistress Sarai. The angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress, submit to her. The angel of the Lord also said to her, I will surely multiply your offspring so that they cannot be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are pregnant. So let's underline again, Behold, O Lord. Behold, you are pregnant and shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael because the Lord, here we go again, because the Lord has listened to your affliction. He should be a wild donkey of a man and his hand against everyone and everyone's hand against him. And he shall dwell over it over against all his kinsmen. So she called the name of the Lord again, who spoke to her. And she said, you are, and this is important, okay, you are, look at this, you are a God, you are a God of seeing. For she said, truly here I have seen him who looks after me. Okay, so I want you to notice how many times we see the angel of the Lord here. We see Lord Right? We see Lord, Lord. We see the angel of the Lord. The Lord again, Lord. And she begins to recognize that this is not just any angel, but this is somebody special sent from God. This is the angel of the Lord. Okay? In fact, look, look at um, um, look, look how she calls him. Right, You are a God of seeing. In other words, you're the God that sees my affliction. You're the God that has seen my pain. Okay, This is exactly what Hagar needed in this time of, uh, of life in the wilderness. Having a baby who was rejected, feeling rejected by her mistress, yet God here giving her a promise. And so uh, this is a clear uh, example of a theophany. That this, is, this angel of the Lord is giving Sarai um, uh, encouragement, is giving her clarity and giving her a, a direct command, right? To return to your mistress and submit to her. And so what does she do, right? She calls this person Lord, and she calls him a God who sees, okay? And, and so what you have here is you have a theophany um, of the angel of the Lord. And you're going to see the, she's going to see this uh, again. You're going to see this uh, probably in... Genesis 32, when Jacob is wrestling with God, right? Maybe you're familiar with that. Um, and you're like, who's that, who's that angel, angel that's wrestling with, um, who's wrestling with him? Well, that is, that's the angel of the Lord. And, and so that's, um, you know, who could that be? Well, remember that the, it can, if it can only be God and God cannot be seen, right? Who does that leave you with? We know that God is Trinity, so it must be the second person of the Trinity, Jesus Christ, right? Um, coming in pre-incarnate form, coming to us to show himself, show grace to God's people. Um, of course, not in his incarnate, you know, uh, New Testament form, not in the servant form, but almost in an angelic form. Um, and so this is such a powerful picture of how Jesus was active in the Old Testament, right? It couldn't be any angel because it's called Lord, right? It couldn't have been, um, you know, God himself because you can't see God, right? Nobody can see God and live. Uh, but, but rather, as, as we see Jesus in the New Testament, this is what we, what we can look at and, and understand this. And the reality in the New Testament is, is this. And um, um, John chapter 14 uh, says this, have I not be with you for so long, and you still do not know me? Philip, whoever has seen me has seen 
the Father. Okay, look at that. How can you say, show us the Father? Okay, those who saw the face of Jesus saw the Father, experiencing a much more profound theophany than Moses did. Moses asked for the glory of God in the Old Testament, right? And those who live with Jesus receive what Moses had asked for. Isn't that powerful? Uh, I mean, this is, this, is a, this is incredible that Jesus is not only active in the New Testament, but then condescends fully into bodily form to speak to us, to come to us, and really to give all the things that we need to have a true relationship with God. And so let me, let me just end it here. Um, I hope this kind of gives you a little bit of uh, understanding when it comes to theophanies. But um, one thing that we can say is that, um, you know, God um, condescends, um, condescends to us. Okay? Um, condescends simply means uh, coming down. And so what we see in the Old Testament is that God was never in this super crazy place that He would never come down to see His people. But God condescended. He saw our need in the Old Testament and ultimately through His Son. And we see it when we read, um, you know, I'm thinking John 1, 118, that He became flesh, right? But that's the greatest theophany. <laughs> you know, the first theophany was Genesis 16, and it would all increment, right, as He would display himself through burning bushes and through angels of the Lord and through pillars of fire. He's, God is appearing. But ultimately, he came down in, in a true theophany, if I could say this, a Christophany, where he came down in our form and became like us so that he can save us, okay? So, so let me just say that. Uh, that. That's number one. Number two, let me say that um, God has never left us. I mean, can you think about that reality? God has always been present. Um, John, Calvin, John Calvin says this, He will descend far beneath His loftiness. Okay, there was never a time where people wanted to see God when God didn't show up. Okay? God always showed up. God always made His presence felt. He never left us alone without a witness. And, and, and so that's what the Bible really is. It's about God displaying who He is before us. And so lastly, um, one more that um, I want to just maybe to encourage us here, and, and it's three, is that uh, God comes to comfort us. Comfort us, okay? Uh, you see, theophanies, okay, divine appearances of God, particularly in the Old Testament, of course, Christ being the ultimate theophany, Give us a glimpse into the heart of God, right? Who, who graciously hears our cry, who graciously comes down, even if you have unbelief, right? Just like Thomas did in the New Testament. And so um, these are very basic, you know, very basic, you know, kind of applications. But um, I think as you think about theophanies, uh, think about how theophanies, divine appearances, ultimately lead up to the Son of God, who would be the ultimate of all theophanies, on our behalf. Amen. God bless you.